This is the Louis T. Network. Hey, either you're outside or you're in the lab room. Who else could it be? But me, cure me. Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab room. Of course, I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. This is the NFL Draft Prospects 101. Your guide to some of the biggest and hottest names the 2015 NFL Draft. We're talking, and I'm just going random now, just guys that I want to see before the draft actually takes place. And so it's random and it's in no particular order, no particular position. We're just, I'm just knocking down guys that I want to see. And so today I'm talking Bud Dupree, another one of these edge pass rushers that could come off the board in the first round. Now, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> after watching the tape, and my mock draft is already out. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do so. It's in two different installments. Part one, picks one through 16. Part two, 17 through 32. First round mock, check it out. It's now up on the Louis T Network on YouTube. But I made a mistake. <laughs> and I'm always going to be the first to admit when I make a mistake. I'm not afraid to tell you I made a mistake. I left Bud Dupree out of the first round. I made a mistake. I didn't watch the tape yet when I made my mock draft, and so I had a problem putting this guy in the first round when I had not seen the tape yet. I made a mistake, <laughs> okay? Let's jump into Bud Dupree. Alvin, Let, let's, I'm, I'm calling the man. Mama named him Alvin, I'm gonna call him Alvin. Alvin! Bud Dupree, let's jump into his pros and talk about why this guy probably is going to be a first round pick in next week's NFL draft. Tremendous size at 6'4", 269 pounds. What more do I have to say? What more can I say? What more do I need to say? That's huge. For an edge pass rusher, that's versatility right there because in this day and age, not a lot of 4-3 defenses out there. A lot of people, a lot of teams switching to 3-4 defenses. So everybody's looking for the hybrid, which is what he can be. But if you were looking for a guy that can just stick his hand in the dirt in nickel pass situations where you got a four-man front and you're looking to get pressure, he can do that too. You got a base 4-3 defense, he can do that too. At 269 pounds, this guy can stand up at the point of attack, set the edge in the run game, and, and get in the backfield and do some things. So there is tremendous size and versatility here. And to me, there are sections when you're talking about edge pass rushers there are different factions and different groups. You got the guys that are bigger, that can get to the quarterback, that can set the edge, that have a bigger frame, like a Dante Fowler Jr., like a Alvin Bud Dupree, that are 6'3", 6'4", 260 pound guys, 270 pound guys. You feel comfortable sticking them out there on the edge and asking them to set the edge in the run game. Then you have the guys that are just pure pass rushers like a Vic Beasley or a Shane Ray, over there around 245 pounds, throwing Eli Harold in that mix. Not really comfortable with these guys necessarily setting the edge in certain cases, but uh, you know they can get to the quarterback. You feel good having them out there for those situations. So Bud Dupree for me is one of those type of guys that you really don't care. First down, second down, third down, doesn't matter. You want this guy on the field because he can do it all. And that size helps him fit and adapt to any situation you're asking him to be put into. Can set the edge in the run game. I just basically spoke to that with his size. He's a guy that can set the edge in the run game. You feel good about him being on the strong side of a formation. You feel good about him being there, being able to take on a tight end, blow him up, mess up a run play. Feel good about him being able to take a tackle, push him back a yard or two into the backfield, just stand his ground and, and see what happens. And so you feel good about him in the run game. He can set the edge in the run game. Initial burst off the line of scrimmage is another strength for Alvin Bud Dupree. This is a guy that, if he knows the snap count, if he knows it's a pass, he's going to try to get off the line of scrimmage as quick as possible, and I love that. Now, you know, of course, sometimes with guys that are nosy and want to get that extra leverage and get off the snap quick, there's a chance that you can pick up offside penalties, but I didn't see that on tape, but you know it's there at the next level. Guys, utilize 
hard counts, and I think he'll be susceptible to that at the next level. But his initial burst off the line of scrimmage with the speed rush is elite. There are times where he gets two steps off of the tackle before he even gets out of his stance. And the only way the tackle can recover is if he has great lateral quickness and is able to push him up the field and allow the quarterback to step up. If he can't kick slide out of his uh, stance fast enough, that tackle is as good as well burnt and beat. And Bud Dupree is going to bend that corner and try to get to the quarterback as fast as possible. So that initial burst off the line of scrimmage it's what I call elite, and Alvin Bud Dupree can be that kind of athlete off the edge in certain instances. That initial burst off the line of scrimmage is elite at times. Very fluid athlete is the next pro, and we saw that at the combine. He displayed that. I think he opened some eyes at the combine with the 40, with the vertical. He is a very fluid athlete, which takes us to our next pro, comfortable in space. When you're a fluid athlete, you are comfortable in space. The guys that are awkward, like fish out of water, when they get out of space, are guys that are not fluid athletes. They're the ones that are mechanical, that they're thinking too much, they're not reacting, they're just out there and they really don't know what to do, they're not sure in their abilities. And so those are the guys you don't want. Those are the guys that just need to be rushing after the passer, not necessarily dropping into coverage. He's a guy that you can drop into coverage. He's a guy that you can rush. You can have spy the quarterback. You can have him do a multitude of things because he's a fluid athlete. He's comfortable in space and he's confident in his abilities. He's relentless. That's another pro for Bud Dupree. Here's a guy that against Missouri, <laughs> Matty Mock decided, the quarterback for Missouri, Matty Mock decided that he was the second coming of Fran Tarkenton. So I talked about that initial burst off the line of scrimmage. Bud Dupree beats the tackle with the initial rush up the field. Tackle is able to push him around, but Bud does get a hand on Matty Mock. But Matty Mock's able to shrug him off, step up, and then, so Bud has been pushed around. Matty Mock decides he wants to run in a big, gigantic circle. And Bud Dupree chases him all the way around. Matty Mock has no idea that Bud, who is relentless on his play, not giving up despite initially having him, not getting him, and being pushed out of the play, starts chasing him around this big looping circle. Matty Mock decides, all right, I'm ready to throw it now, stops, and Bud Dupree catches him from behind, chases him in a full circle, and gets the sack. That's what I call relentless pursuit, and Bud Dupree does not give up on plays. I love the motor, it runs hot all the time and that relentless motor is going to be something that benefits him at the next level gets to the football he gets to the ball and when you get to the ball that leads us to our next pro you make plays and he is a playmaker i love the fact that guys who you know as the best player on the defense when when you're talking college football and you say this guy is the guy you got to watch out for I want to see this guy make some plays, some impact plays. When you talk Houston Texans football and on the defensive side of the football, you say, the guy you got to stop is J.J. Watt. You know why? Because every single game, J.J. Watt impacts the football game. I like when players impact the game when you're supposed to be the best player on that side of the football. Bud Dupree did exactly that. There's a South Carolina game. Pick six, game-winning touchdown to seal it for Kentucky against South Carolina in a 45 to 38 shootout. You've got a Missouri game. I talked about the sack on Matty Mock. He had two forced fumbles in that game, leading directly to 10 points against Missouri on the road. He gets in the backfield, nice in, forces a fumble in the run game, hits Matty Mock, forces him to fumble the football. One of those ended up being a scoop and score for a touchdown. So he, he makes plays and when you're around the football good things happen that pick six to win against Carolina South Carolina was a ball that was batted in the air Johnny on the spot comes down he catches it strolls into the end zone when you're around the football good things always happens you go to his cons not a natural pass rusher I've talked about this with several other guys including Dante Fowler Jr. These guys aren't natural pass rushers. These aren't guys 
that and it's okay that he's not a natural pass rusher because you ask him to do so many different things. If you were to line this guy up, say 90% of the time and tell him just go after the quarterback, I think the numbers in sacks would, would increase. But because you ask him to drop in the coverage, because you move him around, because you've got him doing so many different things, much like a Dante Fowler Jr., you've got this guy all over the place because they're so versatile, there aren't going to be a lot of sack numbers. They're not going to get to hone in on just being a pass rusher. They've got other things that they've got to concentrate on and learn how to do. So it's okay that he's not a natural pass rusher. He can still get to the quarterback. He's a guy that you feel good about lining up and having him try to get to the quarterback. But he is not a natural pass rusher. There aren't an array of moves that he goes to that he can win one-on-one -on -one matchups with. He, he basically has an inside rush and a, and a rush up the field. And so we'll talk about another con for him here in a second. He, let's just go ahead and talk about it right now while we're here. He doesn't translate speed to power well enough for me. I, this was something I thought that he would do a little bit more uh, because he's so big at 6'4", 269 pounds, about 270 pound man. I was expecting him, with that initial burst that I talked about him getting up the field, I was expecting him to, at some point, take that arm, stick it in the shoulder of the tackle and drive him up the field, put him on skates, have him dancing, put him in the lap of the quarterback and make something happen that way. I just didn't see it. If he doesn't win with that initial rush up the field, if he doesn't win with the inside rush, he's not getting to the quarterback. And then those are his two moves. He's got a fastball, he's got a change up. If those aren't working, he's not getting to the quarterback. And finally, the last con for Alvin Bud Dupree doesn't impact the run game as much as you would like to see. Now let me clarify this because I don't want you to think that he's not a good run defender. That is not what I'm saying. I just alluded to the fact that when you're the best player on your defense, I want to see you make plays. When he makes plays, they are impactful, okay? I talked about the South Carolina game. He forced a fumble in that game that they ended up recovering. I talked about the Missouri game. He forced two fumbles in that game that led directly to 10 points. He can get in the backfield on two of those fumbles that I just referenced. Out of the three, two of them were running plays that he got in the backfield immediately, hit the running back, ball came out. He can be very impactful in the run game, but then there are games where you just don't see him in the run game. And that's the problem I have. I want more consistency. I watched the Florida tape three overtimes. I didn't see Bud Dupree show up in the run game at all in that game. I watched another game with him. I can't remember what game it was, but he didn't show up. I wanna say it was LSU. No production in the run game whatsoever from Bud Dupree in that game. And so I say to myself, I saw South Carolina, you were disruptive as can be in that game. I watched Missouri as disruptive as you can be in that game, in the run game, in the pass game. And then I watched Three other tapes and nothing. Louisville, nothing. Is it, what up? I don't remember, if he, I don't think he played Louisville. I might be mixing up my players, but that's the problem I have. I want more consistency out of Bud Dupree. If I can get that from him, I'll feel a world of a lot better at taking this guy in the top 10, in the top 15 of the draft. The question to me is, what do you prefer? What are you looking for? I've seen him mock to the Jets at six. Does Todd Bowles, head coach Todd Bowles, value girth, a guy that's a little bit bigger, stopper at the point of attack, or does he just want a natural pass rusher? That's going to answer your question if he decides to go with an outside edge pass rusher as to who he's going to take. Will he take a Shane Ray? Will he take a Vic Beasley? Will he take a Dante Fowler Jr. if he's on the board? Will he take a... a Alvin Bud Dupree, if he's on the board. Those are the questions you gotta ask. What are you looking for? What's your flavor? I think this guy is going to come off the board at some point in the first round. But we shall see, we, we're only a week away from the 2015 NFL Draft, but I believe on Thursday, April 30th, Bud Dupree, Alvin Bud Dupree, will hear his name called on that very first day of the draft. That's going to do it for me here in the lab room 
talking about Alvin Bud Dupree and his NFL Draft Prospects 101 breakdown. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. Come back and join me as I continue to break down anything and everything in the National Football League. I'll see you in a bit. I got more guys to break down. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.